Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the series of deploying on AWS cloud by using Terraform. So this is part two as part of this specific episode. What we're going to do is we are going to deploy AWS public subnets and we are going to create route table for them. That would be custom route tables and associate the public subnet with the custom route table. Now, uh, if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. So let's go ahead and see what's the agenda for uh, today's specific video. So guys over here, the agenda for us is to deploy AWS public subnet and create a, a route table that is a custom route table and associate that route table to the public subnet. Now let's see that in the diagrammatic format. So guys in, in part one of the video, what we have done, we have created a VPC. As part of that VPC, as I said you that whenever you create a VPC in AWS, automatically create a main route table. In that main route table, when you're creating an internet gateway, your route table entry needs to be part of that main route table, then only the specific uh, internet gateway, the internet connection that you're making, it would be available for the VPC. So what that we have done as part one. So as part two, what we're going to do is in the same VPC that we had already launched, in that we are going to create a public subnet. Once we create the public subnet, in that public subnet, we will create a custom route table named public route. In this route table, we will create entries, okay, route table entries and associate this public route table to our public subnet. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So uh, uh, as part of uh, starting, what we're going to do is we are going to create three files, provider file, variable file and version file. So as part of my first video, I have already explained you that what exactly these files are. So this time I have created that file in advance. So as part of provider, we are using AWS provider. The region that we are using is US East one and the credentials that you want, you can define it in this format or you can give your AWS credentials in another format. The same way the version uh, we are going to use is, it is going to be greater than or equal to 0.12 version of Terraform. Now, let's go ahead and uh, create a new file. In this file, we will say it public now to create public subnet let's go to the official documentation and see what is this public subnet all about if i go over here in the official documentation so the resource tab that we're going to use is is aws subnet now when we are going to reuse this resource what are the arguments that are being used as part of it so over here you can see there are multiple arguments which are being defined over here and we have to use this specific arguments so guys in previous video what i said that you can just search with required and whenever you search with required see the vpc id as part of this resource creation is compulsory now uh, you might be thinking that as part of this uh, tutorial and as part of the folder that i am showing you over here it is just having these things it is not having any uh, data about what vpc is created what internet gateway is created what is existing route table so for doing that there is a concept called data source. What is data source? Uh, by using AW, uh, Terraform data sources, you can fetch dynamic values that can be used as part of your resource creation. So let me go ahead. So as part of this, let me just go ahead and copy this. So when we are creating public submit, so what all things are required? So this is going to be required. So now over here, you can see resources AWS submit and the uh, subnet name we have kept public subnet one. Now the VPC ID over here. So I am using an interpolation data AWS VPC ID get VPC ID. What is this? This is the data source that I'm going to define. So let me show you what is that specific data source that I'm talking about. So guys, what I have done, I have created one variable. So that variable is AWS VPC get VPC. Okay. So whenever you search with AWS VPC, you can search with different types. One is a resource type, one is data source type. So these are the different types. So when you search with this, you will land up on this page. Okay. AWS VPC. So this is a data source you can see over here. Over here, what they are showing us that when you want the runtime value of the VPC ID, which is already been created, you can get that. Now for doing that, these are the arguments defined that you can use and these are the attributes that you can use as part of the output. Now, what I'm going to do is over here is, so in this, what I have done, I have used filter. 
FIPO over here that is this argument so by using the filter argument what I am going to do is I am actually filtering based on the tag name that I have given to my previous resource that I had created that is custom resource so it will specifically fetch me the VPC ID of that specific resource only that is the power of tagging that is the reason it is recommended to use so this is what we are going to do so based on that it is going to provide me the VPC ID okay so that is one variable that we have created by using data source now moving ahead I have given the cider block and I have given the other details of this okay so whenever we create a variable it is a best practice that instead of storing it uh, in the resource file we create a variable file over here so let me go ahead and create rash.tf and as part of this I will just save this file okay so let me go back to the public submit so guys over here as you can see that now I have used data that is the data that I have defined over here if I go and see so this is the data source data that is and this is the resource type and this is the resource name that is get vpc so I have used the same and the id that you can see this is the attribute as you can see the official documentation this is the attribute that you can refer over here as part of this or the return value okay so that is what I have used over here so uh, by using this the cider block that I have defined so as you know that the cider block that we have defined for that was 10.0.0.16 so over here I have defined it 18 okay and I have also defined availability zone over here so we are going to create this in US East 1 A region now guys if you want to create multiple public subnets there are multiple ways of doing it so in cloud formation we are actually stagnant by uh, creating separate resources every time but in cloud formation we can use intrinsic function by using that we can create it but as this is a beginner series I won't be uh, using that I I would be uh, keeping it simple and I will create one more subnet so let's go ahead and create two subnets over here that is public subnet 1 and public subnet 2 so over here I have actually changed the cider block okay so you can change the cider block based on your requirement and map public IP and launch so what is map public IP so whenever I am going to create an EC2 instance as part of this public subnet it will be having a public IP address allocated automatically to that that is the reason we have kept this as true so this is how we have defined this to public subnet now as we have created public subnet so let's go ahead and create a route table route okay. So what is route table let's jump to the official documentation and see so this is a resource aws route table by using this resource you can create a custom route table based on the requirement that you have so for us what we are going to do is we are going to create a custom route table and in that custom route table we are going to add the internet gateway for us that is the internet gateway id now to do that we don't have the internet gateway id as part of our variables defined so for doing that again we will have to define a variable first so what that variable would be so that variable would be internet gateway variable so in this i am using a data of internet gateway and as part of it what i am doing is i am filtering it by using the tag name that i have given to my previous resource this is going to return me the internet gateway id for it now once it returns the internet gateway id what i am going to do is i am going to utilize that internet gateway id to my public sub public subnet that is a public route table that I am going to create so this is my AWS route table as part of this resource it is going to create a new fresh route table for you once you create a route table over here you can associate the VPC ID so over here you can see the variable that I had created over here I am again using the same variable so you can see the use of data source you can use it multiple times just you have to define it once as part of, of your variable declaration so let me just go ahead and uh, uh, tell you what is the route so this is the route that we are adding and as part of this route the gateway id which is mentioned over here that we need to add in our aws route table so over here it is again data that is mentioned over here this is the type of the resource this is the name of the resource and this is the id which we are going to get as part of this variable that we are defining over here so that is how we will get the internet 
gateway ID. So let me just remove this from here as part of our best practice that we are following and let me add that to the variables file. Okay, So we have used two variables. So now once the route table is created, so the next task is to associate that route table to the public subnet that we have created. So right now if we are, I am going to run this code, what it will do, it will create one public subnet and it will create one route table, but there will be no association between them. Public subnet will be a separate entity and the route table will be separate ent entity. So to bring them together, we are going to use route table association. Now, as you have noticed, we have created two public subnets. So we have to associate this with two public subnets. So what I am going to do is, first I will define it to be associated with public subnet one. So what is this? This is the resource that is AWS route table association as this part of this association. If these are the arguments that is you can give the subnet ID, gateway ID and the route table ID. Okay. And once you provide this arguments based on that, if you re if required, there is only one attribute which has been written that is the ID that you can use. Okay. So I have defined the same over here. So what it is going to do is it is going to associate this route table with public subnet one that we have created over here. That is the first one. Now to do that for the second one, again, I will have to write another resource block. So this resource block is going to be for public subnet two. So once I have done this for public subnet one and public subnet two, let me go ahead and save this file. Okay. okay. Now to verify that the things that we have created, if we want to see that after we are applying the resources or after we are deploying the resources on AWS cloud, what we can do is we can add outputs also over here. So it's not compulsory to add output files, but just to showcase that what we have created is getting reflected, we can use outputs.tf and as part of this output.tf, what I can do is I can, uh, you know, get the public subnet IDs as well as the route table that we are creating over here to be displayed. Okay. So over here you can see I have used the interpolation. Uh, first I am referring to the type of the resource, then the resource name and this is the attribute by using which I am calling it. So I guess we have as part of our work, we have created the public subnet, then we have created the AWS route table for public subnet and the association also has been created. Now I will go to the next slide and over here. Now we have to initialize the Terraform init command first because this is a new folder in this I have not yet initialized. How you can see that? See this is our previous part one. In part one, whenever you initialize this dot terraform folder will be created. So right now you don't see any dot terraform folder over here. So let me jump to my terminal over here and let me run terraform in it. So guys, as soon as I am going to run this, it is going to install the executable and as you can see dot terraform file is created and the log HCL file is also created. Now let me go ahead and let me run terraform format command. So by any chance, if there is any indentation issue in any of the file, it will be well corrected by using terraform format command. Okay, so you can see it has actually updated popsup.tf and the variables.tf. Okay, so these were the changes that was made. Now let me take you back. Uh, to the files so over here I can just checking whether I have saved all the files yes I have now I will just go ahead and run terraform plan so if there is any error that we have encountered I can see that too so what I will do I will just let's make it to terraform plan I don't see there is any error that we can see. So over here you can see it is going to create the public route table. After that it is going to create association, association 2 along with association this is the public subnet 1 and public subnet 2. So all the resources that we have defined it is going to create. So over here you can see it is going to create 5 resources and over here you cannot see any of the 
ID is over here. The reason for that is the resources has not yet been created. So let's go ahead and create the public subnet right away. Terraform apply auto. Let me hit enter and let's see if it is getting deployed successfully. Okay. It is creating public subnet one, two. Table. Yes. So guys, as you can see, our code has run successfully. Public route table is created. This is route table ID and the public subnet one and public subnet two both are being created. So as part of this tutorial, what we were going to see is how public subnet is created and how we can create a custom route table and associate them. Now let's jump to our AWS console and check whether whatever we have created has been created successfully. So in your VPC, if I click on VPCs, this is the custom VPC which was already created. Now I will click on subnet. So in subnets, see public subnet one and public subnet two that we have created. Now if I go back to my code, so over here in public subnet one and two, what you can see, I have actually created it in different availability zone. One is in one A and one is in one B. So let me go ahead and check that for you. So guys, as you can see, one is in one A and the other is in 1B. So that is okay. Now if I click on public subnet 2 and I will just scroll this up. Let's see the properties. So CIDR is correct that we have defined. Apart from that, see it is also associated with the route table. It is associated with the VPC that is our custom VPC and all it is in US East 1. Okay. So everything is mentioned as per C. This is a US, this is zone ID which has been used. Okay. Now let me check the second one that is public subnet one. Okay. So this is also correct. It is associated with the APC and with the route table. Now let's go ahead and check the route tables. So guys, as you can see, this is the main route, uh, custom route table that we created. And over here, it is showing explicit subnet association. That means this route table is associated with two subnets. How you can check that? Go to subnet association. In this, you can see it has been associated with public subnet one and public subnet two. Now, as part of our code, if I take you back, so it was not only subnet association, there was also a route that we created. So let's see if the route that we have created has been added over here. Okay. So you can see the route has been successfully added. That is the internet gateway is associated as part of this route table. So that's it for this uh, tutorial, guys. I hope you understood uh, how we can create public subnets and how we can associate it. So if you have any queries, don't forget to uh, send your queries in the comment section. I will try my level best to answer your queries. Apart from that, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in part three. Thank you for joining the tutorial. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye.